Hello and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to follow my journey to review all 1000 classic Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. So this is a review for Bosco's Mechanical Man, released in 1933, it's the 61st in the series and it's directed by Hugh Harmon. This wonderful new print, I'm actually not sure where I got it from, I get a lot of well wishes, they send me all sorts of different prints, so I tell you, it looks a heck of a lot better than the, what I used in the original commentary, which was a faded, probably 10th generation video or something. Now, I can't show you the full thing here due to copyright on YouTube, though I'm pretty sure you can find this one pretty easily if you look hard enough. But, in case you haven't seen it, Bosco surprises Honey, but Honey wants Bosco to wash dishes. Why not, right? Bosco is kicked out for not helping much, but gets the idea to create a robot to do chores for him. Sure, okay. And so, just like that, he creates a robot, but since Bosco has no degree in computer science or engineering that I'm aware of at least, the robot ends up running rampant. So, there you go. So, what you're going to see first is a re-edit of the original audio commentary I did before I had to take that down due to a request from Warner Brothers Legal. So my good friend Blue Genesis, who's editing this whole video, has graciously also re-edited the original commentary track. So thank you very much, Blue, for that. So keep in mind, at the time when I did the original track, it was with the worst pitch quality, although I've upgraded it for, you know, for the sake of your eyes, I would say. But yes, um, just keep in mind, the pitch quality simply was not great at that time. So. Grab some popcorn and enjoy. So here we've got a gag that really doesn't make any sense. So she's cleaning the windows, you know, putting some soap on and getting that ready. And then Bosco comes up and, and does this. I don't know, how does that work? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's cute, but <laughs> it makes absolutely no sense. And yes, um, I have to stop looking for logic in these particular cartoons, but I just can't help myself, can I? But for me, this cartoon really kicks in the gear once we do see this okay, for man. <laughs> I do like the sheep joke, that's brief. Feeling a bit, uh, yeah, sheepish. Get it? Now, here, here's what's interesting. Look, look, look at the title of this newspaper, the Daily Bugle, and this cartoon's almost 30 years prior to the, f to the first appearance of Spider-Man and the Daily Bugle. Maybe we have a crossover. I, I actually like this design, it's a very typical of the time period, and he just puts just an old car motor in and, and it works. How about that? And as you can imagine, it doesn't work well. And the weird thing is, he's still got it to work though. It's still a working robot, even though it's not doing what he really wants. How big this house is. Just... Just keeps going and going. Look at the way the gears are just going backwards and forwards. That's pretty clever. But I never understood, like... So he smashes the dishes, he goes to the garage and creates a robot. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> That's why this for me is one of the better boss goes. Because of just how ridiculous it is. I mean, and of course Mary had a little lamb. She just somehow fits that in, even though he's got a whole car motor in there from before. And look how flexible he is. And is it me or is, does the body type of this particular robot just change? Wider, and we got the record wider, skipping. Wider, wider. Is it just the same animation cycle that they reuse over and over, but they just hold on each drawing that fraction longer? Because it just looks like that they're just using the same drawing over and over, as opposed to maybe drawing it a little differently to emphasize slower movement. Let me know in the comments. I'm really curious about, about that, because that, that's what it looks like. So yeah, Bosco's Mechanical Man. Very strange cartoon, but definitely one of the more fun ones in the Bosco series. So like I said, we're nearing the end of Harmon and Ising. Not sure whether to cry or celebrate, but we'll find out once we watch the last few. 
Before I get into the short, there is one reference that you may not be aware of. The robot towards the end says, you're now in the hands of the dear old maestro. You are now in the hands of the dear old maestro. Now, that's a Ben Burney reference, and he was a radio personality at the time. In fact, later on, he'd be parodied as Ben Birdie in a later Mary Melody short directed by Fritz Freelink. So there you go. But yeah, going through the cartoon, you know, it starts off kind of weird, where you got the whole little butt joke. I... Okay, sure, <laughs> why not? But yeah, I would have mentioned this in the original track, but how exactly did Bosco do that writing? I mean, this new this new cleaner print doesn't exactly answer that question, but whatever, you just go with it, who cares? So that whole, you know, haha, I'm not doing dishes, I'm not washing dishes, you know, the audience at the time, you know, doing the dishes was seen as ladies' jobs, so they would have found it funny that uh, Bosco, ha ha, he's doing a girly job kind of thing, and whereas these days you might look at it and you go, what's a big deal? Do your fair share, please. I mean, I'm assuming they're living together, I don't know. I'm not going to delve too deeply into whether they live in the same house or not. But one thing I didn't get was why did Bosco later on turn into a sheep? You, you know, usually you would have a character having, you know, a yellow stripe and alright, it's black and white, sure, but you would have some sort of, uh, they'll turn into like a skunk or something, but a sheep? Alright, sure. Oh, and we got the Daily Bugle before the Daily Bugle was in, in a Spider Man comic, so how about that? But you know, this kind of a short, you know, I, I do like the innocence about. It's like, okay, Bosco just creates this robot at ease and it just works. There's no real logic to it whatsoever. It's just, it's just there. It just, it's just created. And you know what? I think it's kind of cute. I, I really do. And a lot of shorts around this time from various studios would have at least some sort of a short where the main character would create some sort of a robot. I know Mickey did, did it at one stage. Um, I'm pretty sure Popeye did as well. So it was kind of like a, like a trope. And I would imagine, and my editor Blue Genocide will probably attest to this, there was definitely, I guess, uh, around this time there was some monster-themed... Uh, or robot themed um, uh, movies and, and radio plays and so on that this sort of thing we would be playing up against but yeah, he can correct me if I'm wrong but I'm pretty sure that's the case. So also I want to point out some of the music well I mean first of all the weirdest choice was that Yankee Doodle playing in the, in the soundtrack when the when the actual engine was being loaded I mean, I think it's an engine, it's just a standard car engine that goes inside the robot. But yeah, why ain't you do? I don't know. In the very beginning, you hear One Step Ahead of My Shadow, which was already a Mary Melody short, which was actually themed around that particular song, which was a, sadly a racist short, but that's where it basically comes from. Okay, so One Step Ahead of My Shadow. Another song that's frequently used in this one is Ain't We Got Fun, and not only does that become another Merry Melody short later on that was done by Tex Avery, but that particular song would end up being a staple in Looney Tunes. You'll hear it quite a bit, and including in uh, What's Up Doc, where you have one of the personalities, you know, sat, trying to sing, you know, Ain't We Got Fun, and, and which is uh, Eddie Cantor. <laughs> And speaking of this robot, I, just, I do love this design. I really love this design. In fact, I love the 1930s design aesthetic. Uh, and, you know, this robot's definitely no, no exception. It is interesting how it's a very expressive robot. It makes no sense whatsoever, but it works pretty well in this short, especially towards the end when the robot just has these really bad fa well not bad that where the robot has these facial expressions towards the dog and he's just gonna decide, you know what, I'm just gonna shock this dog. Just because there's I guess this robot's really evil or something. And this robot apparently can smell, so he smells perfume and you know, then starts acting all effeminate and Sadly, that part of the short would not play well today because it's quite clear that the effeminate nature of that robot in that scene would have been laughed at in the audience like, haha, look, he's acting like a girl, you know, because that sort of thing's funny, right? Mm. Another weird thing in a very weird short, but still entertaining enough, is the dog running slow. And of course, they would have had 
have done that to save a fair bit of money. They just kept on using the same cycle over and over. But, you know, that's the difference between them and what Disney would end up doing, where if you want a character sort of struggling to run, here it's just, yeah, let's just slow it down. It's just a normal run cycle. Whereas in what Disney would end up doing is, especially with Pluto, if Pluto is struggling, Pluto would end up just going that little bit slower. But here, yeah. <laughs> It's just, this, they just slowed it down, and yeah, it doesn't work, but oh well. And of course it just ends. Because why not? Because <laughs> it's a Bosco short. What else do you expect at this particular point? And now, my good friend Camden Spees, he sent me this little recording, and he just wanted to showcase just a few bits of Bosco merchandise around this time, so I figured this short would be a good place to put it, so... Take it away, Camden. One of the interesting things about Bosco was all of the merchandise that came with them. There was comic books and coloring books and figurines and wooden figures and movie reels. And part of that was because Hugh Harmon and Rudy Alfizing owned the property of Bosco and they tried to sell them in merchandise like comic books and coloring books well into the 1950s. In fact, in 1957, there was a Bosco coloring book released where it says Bosco Star of Looney Tunes. But this would not have been released by Warner Brothers, this would have been entirely by Hugh Harmon and Rudolph Ising, particularly Hugh Harmon. Now, Bosco was also in pinback buttons, which every cartoon character seemed to have a pinback button at the time. And a lot of, even the most minuscule characters had pinback buttons. Goopy Deer had a pinback button, Bosco had a pinback button, Honey, Bruno, and even Wilbur. Wilbur was a character who I think only appeared in just a few of the Bosco cartoons. I know he appeared in Bosco and Honey. There's also ceramic figures and movie reels and stuff like that. One of the most fascinating thing, things about Bosco, though, was the comic strip. The comic strip was syndicated by Fred Harmon. Fred Harmon was Hugh Harmon's brother. Fred Harmon also did the Red Rider comic strip at the time. Now, the comic strip only ran for a few years, and this was due to the fact that, of course, Bosco had a waning popularity. But it ran, I think it began in 1934. And what happened was, after a certain point, it was actually reprinted in Dell Comics' The Funnies magazine, which reprinted comic strips. Alley Oop and Dick Tracy and Captain Easy and John Carter of Mars all appeared in this comic book. And Bosco also appeared in the comic book as well. In fact, he's on issue 30 of the cover of the comic book, and hopefully Anthony will show the cover when he redoes this video commentary. So thank you, Camden. So just to wrap up this short, in terms of rating, look, it's 6 out of 10. It's a very basic short. It's typical of Bosco around this time, and it's darn weird. And it's nice to look at, especially now. And it just breaks my heart that the other Boscos have not been, at least, doesn't have to be 100% restored, but even if they're all like this, I'd be pretty happy. So you can see some of the details because, you know, they may not be perfect, but they're interesting to see, and, you know, in terms of what they were doing at the time, especially to get around a lot of the budget limitations that Leon Schlesinger would have put on them, which would lead them to leaving the partnership with Leon Schlesinger, which is not long to go. But that'll do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take care.